Falling Contest is scheduled for one fall. Making their way to the ring. World Wrestling Flashback! All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us on World Wrestling Flashbacks. We have a very, very special guest. It's actually the first guest that we're interviewing for this season of World Wrestling Flashbacks, the podcast. Former WWF artist and award-winning artist, might I add, Tom Fleming. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. You know, this has been a it's been a kind of crazy ride lately with the uh, resurgence of all the uh, interest in the stuff that I did back in the '90s. Um, you know, it's been like 30 years. And yeah. um, I've been out of the, I've been, you know, out of the scene for a while and just started um, posting on Facebook groups and things like that. And the response has been incredible. Yeah. So I, I was a product of the era that you were, you know, working for the WWF and I just happened to stumble upon your work on uh, online on eBay specifically. And sometimes you're just so used to seeing artwork that, that you forget that there's a person behind it, you know? And then when I, when I come to find that it was you and I was like, we have to try, I was talking to John and Katie who I work with. And I was like, we got to get this guy on, we got to talk to him. Cause I mean, cool. I, I was only thinking right up front that it was just like kind of the, the pay-per-view posters and it, and it went beyond that. Uh, so I definitely want to get into that, but how did you get uh, into uh, art like when you were growing up what sort of inspired you to uh, chase this dream yeah the uh, the first inspiration I gotta say was uh, my older brother uh, kind of dabbled with drawing and copying comic books and stuff like that and I you know one of the things was you know you get a little competition between your siblings and um, I wanted to draw as well as him and I never could he gave it up and became a uh, a computer guy and I you know, stayed with it. And uh, pretty much by the time I was like nine, 10 years old, all I wanted to do was become a, uh, you know, a Marvel comic artist. So that was like the uh, the goal from an early age. So did you have any specific comic artists that you uh, looked up to, like Jack Kirby or any of those types of the Steve Dick? Um, or... Yeah, big time. Actually, it's, um, <clears throat> you know, most people, uh, one of the big guys in the business is, um, is John Basima. But actually, his brother, Sal Basima, was uh, another, he was an artist also, and a fantastic artist. And he happened to draw the, my two favorite titles, which was The Incredible Hulk and Rom Space Knight, which is Excellent. this character right here. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So yeah, Sal, you know, Sal was a, a big early influence. Uh, and mm -hmm. I would just sit and copy uh, the the Hulk issue, the the Hulk comic books and ROM and yeah. that whole thing. And then it went on to um, later on, Bill Sienkiewicz, uh was the first uh, comic artist to really bring fine arts into the uh, comic scene. And that's when right. it, the, the influence of like, wow, I want to be a comic painter came into play. Mm -hmm. So when you were going, because you went to uh, Syracuse University, right, for for art, um, yeah. was was comic art something that was um, like available in terms of, you know, learning there? Like, were you able to network, you know, in school for comics specifically or did you have to go out of your way? And so because I'm not sure how the comic industry works from like an art perspective. Gotcha. Yeah, it's actually a really good question. Uh, it's and it's it's interesting because early on when I was at Syracuse learning, I was not I had absolutely no plans on becoming a comic book artist. Really, my oh, okay. my uh, aspirations were to be a fantasy uh, paperback cover artist. Mm. And yeah. I looked up to a lot of fantasy artists like Frank Rosetta, Boris Vallejo, uh, Michael Whalen, guys like that. And I just wanted to paint fantasy because it lent itself more to i i'm very much into realism and mm -hmm. kind of bringing that fantasy element into uh the realism into the fantasy element so what happened was um i uh at syracuse they had a great kind of very well-rounded program and Luckily, luckily enough, one of the guest professors one semester was Dick Giordano, the vice president of DC Comics. Wow. So it, it was a uh, it was a nice um, kind of like, uh, you know, introduction to at least someone 
big at one of the companies and my buddy date yeah big time big time um and he really embraced uh me and my buddy dave devries who dave from the you know he was driven to become a comic book artist that's what he that was his focus and um, basically long story short dave went in uh dick giordano had us come into dc comics he gave us a tour uh dave started working immediately for dc and i kind of went a different way and got the job answering an ad in the new york times for the uh world wrestling federation That's so incredible. yeah, yeah. totally so what, what, un, was the, un, what was that i was just gonna say it was completely on you know i i mean it was not planned i had no there was you know there was no um I had no idea that that's where things were going to lead after I, you know, yeah. graduated because I was flipping pizzas and, um, you know, I was making right. five bucks <laughs> off the, uh, you know, off the books and, you know, just trying to get by while I got my portfolio around and, you know, boom, they, uh, I threw five little snapshots into an envelope, sent it out to a generic uh, ad in the New York times. And they called me in for an interview. So what, what were they looking for? Uh, specifically at that time the WWE. Uh, well you know this is the, i have questions about that uh they were definitely looking for you know for sure they were looking for my boss adriana she was a fantastic designer uh but she needed help with illustration costume design uh prop it like pretty much like a broad spectrum of um of uh tasks the thing is, I graduated as an illustrator. I had no idea that when I accepted the job that I was going to be thrown into costume design, prop, actually making the props, um, wow. you know, doing <laughs> everything. That's incredible. Yeah. So when so when you started up with the company, uh, what are some like the earlier tasks that? Uh... Yeah, you were saying like you know doing props and a wide array of like illustrations for you know whether it's logos i saw you know listed on your website as well as costume design but what were some of the yeah. earlier things that you recall working on um well the, the very first job i ever did for the world wrestling federation and i say world wrestling federation because that's what it was then i know wwe i do it now. all the time I, I i do it all the time it just it just rolls off the tongue better uh, yeah um I, and i was there during the transition when they actually lost the lawsuit and uh the world wildlife fund won and it was it was yeah, shocking wow. yeah so i saw the whole kind of transition with the logos and the whole thing with the magazine yeah. and everything but um uh you know it um what was the original question it was uh so what were like some of the like the first project that you the had first what, some of the earlier projects yeah <laughs> Okay, so the first project that I ever did when I when I walked through the door was they said we're going to give you a uh, a freelance project. They had no, they did not say that they want they needed somebody full time. So mm. the the first project that I ever did was uh, the background for the Legion of Doom's poster, which was the um, the one in the alleyway, yeah, and yeah. it was uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking. Uh, because they said they needed it super realistic so that when they photoshopped the uh, photographs of the wrestlers on top of my painting, it had to look like they were in the environment. Uh, you know, and this was my, you know, my first gig realizing that, um, you know, I didn't even know when I went in for the interview that it was the World Wrestling Federation. I walked through the door and I thought it was the advertising agency for the World Wrestling Federation when I saw the stuff on the walls and walking yeah. through. And then um, a professional bodybuilder, Tom Platts, walked by me as I was going for, to, for my interview, and um, I recognized him. And I was like, "Oh, okay, so let, you know, you know, like sports celebrities walking around the building." Mm -hmm. And that's when they told me that the uh, that it was the dub, actual WWF uh, at the time. So um, it was that first Legion of Doom poster. Uh, you know, I did not work in house. They gave me the assignment. I went back to my home studio did the painting and kind of commuted dr drove back and forth from long island new york uh to connecticut to stanford connecticut um uh, once i finished that painting they uh they absolutely loved it 
and they said, uh, let's give you a uh, three or hmm. wow. and, and if that goes well, we'll, we'll let you know where we go from there. Three or four weeks and then turned into uh, um, almost a decade of, uh, you know, freelancing for them. So one of the things that I noticed um, in doing a little bit of research, I, I love costume design and that sort of stuff. I love props. I'm big into like horror movies and sci-fi movies and things like that. So yep. in terms of like the concept art for some of these wrestlers, and, and I didn't go over them, but I, I figured, you know, you might shed some light on that. But how did the costume design element come into play? And uh, were any... Uh, well, let's just start with that. How did that come up? Yeah, that was a completely unex unexpected. I, you know, I was I was uh, working in house, you know, nine to five in a cubicle, and um, you know, I don't remember how early in the, uh, you know, in my, you know, working for them in the job, but it was, you know, it was pretty early, uh, probably a couple of weeks that my boss just came to me and she said um i have uh there's a couple of characters that need costumes let's um here's they would give me these templates of figures of the actual you know wrestler sometimes mm -hmm. we knew what they looked like sometimes they were just generic um templates and she said why don't you start doing working on some concepts and we'll see where that goes yeah, and so we have I, uh a number of them though like tatanka i think was one of them right razor ramon uh i mean you you can go into them yourself i you certainly know better than i do but uh crazy list from what i can see yeah the um and and so I, you know i mean the last thing i ever thought i'd be is a costume designer and um you know i really had no confidence in what i was doing and i think the first costume that i ever designed was um I'm pretty sure it was either Tatanka or Crush. Mm -hmm. And it evidently it went really well. And they just started giving me, and it was me, my boss, and one or two other designers that would work on these costume designs. And then we would all, uh, my boss, the art director, she would pick which ones she liked the most. And then we would all march up to Vince McMahon's office, you know, go down the big, marble hallway to the big doors open up go in there and um and put our work out on this big table that he had laid out and he would uh kind of lumber from one side of the table to the other and yeah yeah have this nervous anticipation when he gets to yours you you know you wait to see what his reaction is and this and that and then finally he would just you know point at one of them and be like i like this one and mm -hmm. um you know it if they if he picked yours, then uh, you know it was a good day for you that day. Um, so did, but, yeah. did the wrestlers have anything to do with like the process of like the costume? Like did did they interact with you guys at all? Like the art department type people, or was it very much just uh, Vince McMahon saying, you know, we have a name for someone and this is their gimmick? You know, something kind of broad. Well, you know, I'll I'll be honest. There was you know being being just one of the designers and artists for the uh, in the art department i don't I, they they definitely interacted with my with the art director uh okay. there's no doubt uh, sometimes they actually had a theme that they wanted to go with sometimes mm -hmm. there was just a snapshot and they would ask us to come up with the theme so it was it varied from and it also depended on if it was a real up and comer or if it was an established big name already coming from the WCW over to the WWF, you know, yeah. there was, um, you know, then there was definitely more interaction with the wrestler and they had much more input. Uh, but I think once the designs were approved by Vince, they choices and the wrestler kind of would kind of choose uh, one or two different uh, designs that Vince chose. Sometimes Vince liked him and he was just like, you know, the wrestler had no say and he was like, this is what so-and-so is going to be. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was, uh, it varied from wrestler to wrestler. Is there anyone that stood out uh, as either being a little difficult working with, or was there a character that was difficult to sort of come up with in terms of a design or, and the flip side of that, was there anybody that was just incredible to work with and just 
you know, you, you had a concept and you were like, I, I know exactly what to do with it. Sort of uh, like yeah. Opposite. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, so right off the top of my head and there's, you know, <clears throat> there's, I have told these, I've told the stories on a couple of other podcasts where, you know, good and bad experiences with certain wrestlers. Um, yeah. Certainly the uh, wrestlers right off the top of my head that I've had great experience with were uh, Charles Wright, Papa Shango. Um, yeah. Super nice guy. We, we've um, had interactions with him on Instagram and I've met him before. Very, very nice guy. It's like a giant teddy bear. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Super, super nice guy. Um, and of course, uh, Brian Clark, Adam Baum, uh, yeah. super nice guy. And also, um, it's it's kind of funny how uh, karma comes back because uh, recently, with all this um, resurgence, with me posting stuff on Facebook and Reddit and things like that, and people... Mm -hmm kind of finding out that I was the guy that uh, did all this stuff. And I was the guy behind the scenes that nobody knew for 30 years. Um, yeah. I got a message from Brian and uh, it turns out he's looking for, he was looking for an artist uh, to work with. And I was just like, and you know, it comes, what goes around comes around. And I was like, man, yeah. he was one of the, he was one of the guys that was, I didn't have a whole lot of interaction back then, but he, whatever interaction we had was certainly positive. And when I designed his costume, uh, you know, I said, oh man, I was like, you know, this is, this is fantastic. He was one of the favorite costumes that I did design mm -hmm. because it was one of the costumes that they gave me a hundred percent leeway where I could come up with my own concepts. And that was yeah. kind of my version of a comic book influenced uh, uh, theme. Yeah. So, right. You know, and not only that, but, you know, not there's sometimes the, the drawings look good on paper and they do not translate well uh, when they're when they uh, in real life. Right. And Adam Baum was one of those designs that I drew it. They created it. And when he came out, it was it was awesome because not only, you know, not only did the costume come out exactly how I designed it, but you know, the, you know, Brian's was built like a freaking superhero. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, he, it looked, it was such a freaking great image when he first came out and it had a really, really awesome impact. Um, so yeah, that, you know, suit, you know, that was super, uh, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon, uh, mm. definitely a, uh, great, um, great uh, experience. Um, not a whole lot of interaction, but he was one of the most uh, gracious of all the wrestlers with the costume. Uh, thanked me for it. Um, we had to tweak his costume because so uh, that's I, what I wanted to ask about. I didn't cut <laughs> you off, but so there is like a two photos circulating along with the concept art, of course, of him in the long tights. Yep. So I don't know if that's if that's where you were going with it, but I did want to ask you about that. How how those changes were made or if it was just out of you know just a normal aesthetic choice that they wanted to go with something different no there's a whole story behind it actually so perfect um <laughs> yeah there's um now if you want i can grab the uh i can grab the actual uh layouts that i did for the costume oh, that'd be awesome and, yeah that'd okay be fantastic yeah yeah give me a second yeah you got it okay so let's so so i'm gonna show you the um the original layout that i did and this is um, me, my, the art director, and another designer, uh, my buddy Jay. We were all working on the costume, and my buddy Jay did did this uh, drawing. So I did I did the actual design on the uh, back of the vest, and he, this was his design for the pants and the uh, black puffy shirt there. And then, um, and I took that. I always and, love that logo. It's so so that, yeah, that. and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit about the logo because then I did this, um, I did this drawing. Yes. And that's the, uh, this is the original Razor Ramon design uh, layout. And what happened was uh, we submitted that to Vince and I don't, I don't recall in what order it was, but I know I was in the gym at the at Titan Towers 
I would go down, get a workout in be, to miss rush hour and uh, before I headed back to Long Island. And um, Scott Hall actually was in the gym that day. Hmm. And uh, he came over to me and he thanked me. You know, he said, man, I just saw the designs. I was just up in the art department. Thank you so much. I absolutely love the design. I've got a, one one small request. He's like, I have been working really hard on my legs, man. And he goes, he goes, we got to turn those pants into trunks. And uh, yeah, so I was like, oh man, that's, you know, okay, that's a no brainer. So what happened was it, I didn't know until like maybe a month or two ago that they, that he actually debuted with the purple pants that my buddy Jay designed. Yeah. And right. I guess... Yeah, and I guess maybe there was a uh, delay in getting the trunks made from my mm -hmm. costume um, in between. And they just, you know, they sent those designs off and ha they had it made and then there was that delay. So, yeah. you know, and as you could see in the design, he uh, we also gave him a uh, fedora and he didn't, yes. you know, <laughs> he, he didn't, didn't go with that. <laughs> yeah. But it's interesting because it's a costume that, you know, once you had the final product, I mean, he stuck with that. Not necessarily the design on the costume, but that the vest and the trunks like that looks stuck with him through WCW, you know, so I mean, that's it says a lot about, you know, all the work that was done. And obviously the image worked for him, you know. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It was. Yeah, the Razor, the, the Razor Ramon thing was uh, was, you know, just fantastic how well he was received um you know with yeah. the fans how long it went it was it was awesome for me to uh when he got inducted into the hall of fame i was like all right wow this is really cool one of my costume designs just got into the hall of fame um yeah. and you know i just realized that razor ramon was inducted into the hall of fame not scott hall and that's i was right, like yeah. that's you know makes it even more special yeah absolutely Oh yeah. Um, that was, uh, you know, that was a, that was a real fun one. And then, uh, you know, me and my buddy Jay had a, we were responsible for going to get all the costume jewelry and, uh, get all those <laughs> fake gold <laughs> chains that he wore <laughs> and, you know, so and, 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 and the props. Yeah. That's awesome. So were there any people that, you know, cause we talked about some of the good ones, were there were any difficult, maybe whether it was the task at hand coming up with a design or the actual people involved. Is there any difficult stories? Okay, so the big story that you know I've I've told it before and um, people get a kick out of it is um, it's it, it's not it wasn't an experience of anybody being difficult designing their costume because you know I and actually I haven't even thought of that until now where I'm like wow you know what unless they were difficult with the art director or the creative director I didn't know. So yeah. every time that I had a costume design that was approved, it seemed to go very smoothly and um, and just, you know, be produced and the wrestler mm -hmm. would come out and start and, you know, and kind of test the waters on how well the uh, character was going to be received. Right. But the big, you know, the big the, the big uh, experience of um, a kind of negative experience with one of the wrestlers was when I designed Adam Baum's costume one of the things that we were responsible for was showing up we would have to go to the first tv taping on their debut and make sure that everything went smoothly uh with their costume make sure there was no hitches or anything like that so i went out on the road and i was uh, i was there for adam bomb's debut and um i was responsible for actually making his uh goggles and his gloves after they approved the uh design uh, they send the drawing out to the seamstresses, they create the singlet, and then, um, and then I had to go out and find the, you know, the right pair of like elect electricians, goggles and gloves yeah. and things like that. And I created, um, I hand painted his goggles. And then I, I just told him actually, um, like a few weeks ago, that one of the, uh, one of the really, the little tidbits about his goggles was that, I needed something in the lenses because they were clear uh, glass lenses and yeah. to create that mystique, you don't want, you don't want, you know, the fans can't see your eyes. Yeah. So what I did was I went up to the uh, merchandise department 
and uh, got a cheap pair of uh, Bret Hart's novelty glasses <laughs> and used that I mylar. That over here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can see they're that real flexible, just mylar. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I cut those up with the, uh, sliced the lenses out and just inserted them into his lenses. And that's why those are like those rose, you know, pink colored um, yeah. re reflective uh, lenses. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm backstage, and um, you know I'm really excited about this costume because it mm -hmm. just went so smoothly, and um, I was so excited to see how he looked when he came out on uh you know out on the uh, out on the big stage, and as I'm standing backstage, Kurt Henning comes storming over to me, and. I, it took me completely by surprise and he right. gets in my face. I'm talking inches from my face, screaming at me. And he was like, are you the guy that designed bombs costume? And I, you know, I, it took me completely by surprise. And I was just like, you know, yeah. And he's like, he's like, you know, you know, what the fuck are you thinking? Uh, designing his costume with the same singly cut as mine. And it oh struck God. me. It struck me so comical that this, freaking big guy is being yeah. so temperamental about a singlet cut and yeah and uh, there was a couple of thoughts that went through my head and mm -hmm. one of them was uh you know how absurd it was that, th that he was this upset and it was towards yeah. kind of the end of his career he was getting older and then there's this young strapping dude with the you know That's i guess right. the same singlet cut and um and I started laughing, giggling, kind of laughing at him nervously, you know, like, holy yeah, yeah. and I, that got him even more pissed <laughs> off. And then the thought occurred to me, I was like, he's not one of the bigger guys. I think he's going to hit me. And if he hits me, I'm actually going to throw down with him. I'm like, holy shit, yeah. what a great story that would be. He'll probably beat the crap out of me. But man, I was like, at least I have a chance with him. Some of the other guys yeah. forget about it, you know? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> But I was just like the thought and any, so what happened was I just, I kind of gained my composure. I said, listen, Kurt, I was like, Vince approves everything. If you got a problem, man, go talk to him. It's one of those yeah. kind of, and he, uh, you know, he stood there boiling for a little bit. He turned around and then I saw him go over to Vince and I saw him doing the same thing, screaming at Vince and Vince started laughing. And he just like stor punched a locker or something and stormed off. And I just oh stood, yeah, I just stood there back and I'm just, my heart's beating. Um, yeah, and I was just yeah. one of those, you know, when you wake up from a, a, from a dream that you're just like, that was really surreal, you know? Yeah, what the uh, hell was that? <laughs> yeah, I just dreamt that I almost got into a fight with Mr. Perfect. And oh um, yeah, and then I had to, you know, get myself together to actually go do my job with, uh, with Adam Bomb's oh, costume. Yeah. Yeah. It turned out to everything was fine. Um, I I don't know if he was just having a really bad day. What the deal was, I you know it is what it is. Um, I don't. I didn't have any other interactions with him besides that, and um, it was one of those. Uh, it was just one of those moments where I'm like, wow, this is going to be. This is a good story. You know, I'll be able to tell this one for for years to come. It's an awesome. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> I don't even know how I would have dealt with that situation. I mean, I'm a small guy, so I, I would have been in a corner. But um, in, in looking at some of the other characters that you worked on, uh, we briefly went over Papa Shango or Charles Wright. So yep. with a character like that, um, and Adam Bomb is an outlandish character in terms of just leaping out of like a comic book panel, you know? Yep. Um, yep. And I feel like Papa Shango is, is similar in that regard. You know, Razor yep. Ramon is more of like a, I don't want to say typical wrestler, but Traditional. more so than like a magi uh, like a magical voodoo priest, you know. So, so what was the process like with a character like Papa Shango? I'm curious. That one we actually um, they came to me, had no idea what he looked like, but they did say they have a theme. They knew that they wanted to go with it like a Haitian witch doctor, mm -hmm. and yeah. they said go watch the movie Serpent in the Rainbow. And that'll okay, give you yeah. an idea of the way that we want to go. So, right. you know, went home, did my research and we, um, we did the design. We, we started working on the designs. It was like three or four of us. Uh, my boss did, um, 
my boss did a lot of the um, some body suits and some of the face paint designs and this and that. Mm -hmm. And I'll actually show you the, um, you know, if, it, you know, it, it's, it's always, it's always easier to talk a little bit when I can show you the vid visuals. Yeah, visuals. Absolutely. Um, and so I did, um, I did the, the uh, spandex design with the double snake on the chest and the, uh, and great. the designs running down his legs. And um, my boss did the facial paint and mm -hmm. I, here's the, um, here's the original design. So yes, you can see that the face paint was to me, it did not have the impact that it needed to have and had no, right. um, feel no dark kind of, um, uh, imposing feeling. So right, I right. kind of decided to do some face layouts myself with with new designs and it's the first time that i ever did that but i felt pretty strongly about it and then this is the first wow. um the first there papa shango <laughs> layout yeah. of his yeah and face. it changes it completely yeah the, the half one reminds me sort of uh like joel schumacher's take on like two faces gang in batman forever i know it's like a weird reference but it reminds yeah. me of that sort of thing whereas like that yeah definitely more in lines with the like you know haitian witch doctor for sure yeah it was um it just looked too mimish to me like you know it had a real yeah. feel of a mime and i was like this is not you know and my boss was a fantastic designer uh but she didn't the one thing that i think maybe that's why she hired me was because you know i was i was very young at the time i was like 24 25 years old and i mm -hmm. think the comic book kind of portfolio and that influence with that kind of younger edge at the time was probably yeah. what she was looking for because she had a real fashion kind of background and so she would do things and they wouldn't have like a hard edge to them but they had a really nice fl design flair so i think yeah. combining her stuff with my stuff worked really well with a lot of the designs and this period of time in wrestling especially is you know, people talk about whether whether they like it or not. You know, this is the time where everyone had just over the top gimmicks, costumes. So like from an art department side of things, I can imagine this being way more interesting than, say, I don't know, like before and after, really. It's like such a cool to, like snapshot of wrestling, you know, and I know. The company would later on see like more success in terms, you know, once you get like your stone colds and things like that. But I mean, yep. creatively speaking, just everyone from like Doink the Clown to, you know, uh, you know, Papa Shango and them. It's just it's for a kid growing up during that time, because I was about four or five. Um, that's what got that's what sucked me in was just, you know, I liked Batman and Superman and things like that. But suddenly you're seeing those types of characters on TV and then in person, you know, later on. So it's, yeah. it's incredible. You know, um, I, I was always a huge fan of this period of time. And um, one of the things that I want to get into as well is like the, the pay-per-view posters. So how did that come about and which, which ones did you work on? Cause I know we have the classic survivor series. I think it was 93, the Thanksgiving. That's posters. it. Yeah. 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 So how yeah. did how how did that sort of stuff come about? Because I mean, from to go to costume to like now, that's like full blown illustration. You know, uh, how how was exactly. that that process? Exactly, and that that's what was um interesting was that when I started working there, so I worked I started working there in ninety one, and um, really what I was doing for two years was pen and ink work a lot of uh, their merchandise art for the, um, you know, for different things that you would see, you uh, know, sometimes it showed up on a, uh, you know, party cup, sometimes it would show up on a, uh, you know, a mug or beach towel. I gotta or... say, some great t-shirts. Uh, the Undertaker design to this day is my favorite Undertaker t-shirt. I never got one and I was looking on eBay crazy prices but uh, <laughs> rightfully uh, so because it's my favorite one that's why i got the print that i got uh love that design yeah the um that okay that was the first that was the first i believe illustration project that they gave me one of the very first besides the legion of doom poster 
um, yeah. as far as like in-house working in my cubicle. And I just learned, and I'm, I, I guess it's the truth, but somebody said that that was the Undertaker's very first T-shirt in '91. Um, I, I think you're, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's definitely his earliest, earlier, you know, uh, look, you know. Yeah. So the um, that project, uh, I had no idea. You know, I started working there, and when I started working there, I had absolutely no knowledge of the business at all i didn't even know who the ultimate warrior was when i started working there so <laughs> yeah. when you know when they gave me the undertaker uh you know he was you know he was wet behind the ears he was a new pretty new character and just you know coming up and stuff and they said you know we need an illustration for the uh under an undertaker t-shirt this is kind of they just basically gave me a brief description and stuff and mm -hmm. actually i'll show you here I actually have the, uh, I still have the original drawing to it. Oh, so, my God. Yeah, that's it. Like, that's, yeah. that's my Undertaker. <laughs> when someone mentions the Undertaker, like, that, that's the look. I love that. It's fantastic. So, yeah, and, you know, and that's been sitting in my flat files for, uh, you know, for 30 years. Um, before I worked on the pen and ink, I do a pencil drawing, and then here's the, uh, here's the original wow. pencil drawing. So, yeah, so I still have a lot of this stuff. Uh, and the coolest thing for me about that, doing the artwork for that T-shirt, was that uh, when, it, when it first came out, it was the uh, birth and the beginning of grunge music. Yeah. And I was sitting with a buddy in his living room watching MTV. And as we're watching it, he's like, Oh my God, dude, check it out. It was an interview with Pearl Jam or Soundgarden. I don't remember which one, oh my God. but he goes, he goes, he's wearing your shirt. And he was wearing my Undertaker <laughs> t-shirt. And Thank I am you. dying to find out what interview that was. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to do some digging around. I, <laughs> that's good. That's a good one. Yeah. It was one of the big early grunge bands and it might've been sad. I don't think it was Alice in Chains, but it, I, I'm pretty yeah. confident it was Pearl Jam. And um, I've looked a little bit for the uh, interview, and obviously it was in '91. Uh, you know, I would imagine. You know, I would imagine that it was the same year that the shirt came out. But anyway, yeah, that was like one of those fun little, uh, you know, fun little, uh, you know, tidbits where I, you know, you're unexpected, and then yeah. you see it, you know, on TV. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so with with the uh, posters, how did that come about? Because that, the, uh, that around, did it just start like around 93 or was it early on that they, you know, I mean, you were around in the company for a while, but. So, yeah, I was working there for about a year and a half, two years or so. And there was um, a friend of mine was doing a lot of the painted work outside. They were, he was just freelance, really well-established comic book artist. His name is Joe Jusco. And he did the Royal Rumble 91, 92 uh, posters all, you know, with all the guys marching down the street and stuff, really, really iconic, yeah. well-known stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they would go on to like recreating that even a few years ago as well. Yes, exactly. Yep. So Joe was doing a lot of their painted work. And I, that's, that was my goal. I mean, my goal was really, that's all I wanted to do was painted artwork, you know, for, oh, yeah. for comics and fantasy art. And so, I was watching them, you know, working there for two years and doing this, you know, all this other stuff was fun. It was nice. I was getting paid well, but I was still watching them hire out these other, you know, some other artists. And it kind of did bum me out in a way that, you know, like, man, you know, like why, you know, why won't they give me a shot? Yeah, and okay, then over here, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Guy right here. <laughs> yes. That's exactly it. And then in 93, they came to me and they said, well, I worked on a, um, I worked on a project that was supposed to be uh, a mural hung in the lobby of the headquarters. And okay. Joe, they asked Joe to actually paint the mural in the lobby. And, you know, the amount of work was so insane that his price was, you know, through the roof. And um, they decided to hire me in-house to paint the mural 
um, you know, like maybe 40 inches high and then enlarge it photographically six and a half feet by 13 feet and hang it in the uh, lobby of the headquarters. And a lot of people know the, uh, a lot of people know the image, but this, this is the image right here. Yes. And yes. this, this took a very long time because they, they made so many changes to it. Vince, you know, Vince one day wanted this guy in there, then he wanted somebody taken out and, you know, it, it changed daily. And we went through so many different phases of it and I worked and worked. But basically what it came down to when I started painting and they saw the, the quality of the work, they that's when they got the confidence to uh, hire me for the uh, Survivor Series uh, event posters. So and they hired me like an idea in mind with with regards to I mean, I, of course, it takes place around, you know, for their Thanksgiving event. But yeah. uh, was there anything that they came to you like you have to meet these that, you know, it's these dudes that are going to be in the poster or whatever. Were there any rules, you know, that you had to follow like that? Yeah, hundred percent. They that one they uh, they they knew exactly what they wanted. They came to me. They said uh, it's going to be Tatanka, uh, Lex, the Steiner brothers, and they're going to be surrounded around a turkey that's going to be dressed like Yokozuna. And <laughs> it's up to you to create the visual. So it was a very brief verbal description for the most part. And then I would march up to the uh, uh, photographic archive room upstairs, look for all the photo reference of the guys that, you know, the right faces, yeah. poses, things like that. And I would start working on them and uh, put it together. And, you know, long story short, it was, um, it was extremely successful. They loved the painting. And uh, another part of the story that I tell all the time, that's a little bit uh, entertaining is that when I, they didn't have uh, plans at the time to do a second painting. They did the first one. It was going to be an ad in the magazine. And because they loved it so much, they came up with the idea of doing the uh, foreign fanatics on the second page as you flip right. it. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. It really yeah. worked well in the magazine. The only problem was they went and they got it approved by Vince. And when they came to me to tell me that they needed it, I believe it was within the week. I was leaving for Europe on vacation the following day. And there was no time for me to go on vacation, come back and do the painting in time to get it out, to, you know, for the right promotion. So basically what I had to do was go home, put on a pot of coffee and I painted for 24 hours straight. And wow. from beginning to end, I'm, yep, 24 hours later, no sleep drove back into Stanford, Connecticut with the finished foreign fanatics painting and, um, you know, handed it in. They were thrilled. They, you know, they couldn't believe that I got it done that fast. Went back, to, you know, went to the airport, got on the plane, on uh, the flight to Europe and uh, pretty much just passed out for the uh, entire flight. <laughs> the one thing I noticed is there's like an alternate take on the, with, with the, you know, Lex, because there's one where Tatanka is replaced with Undertaker, correct? That is correct. Yep. And so, so after what, I, what, what's the story with that? The, so the story with that was because I went to Europe and I was away when I got back in the time that I was away, Tatanka got hurt and was no longer able to, uh, um, to compete or be in the, yeah. uh, be in the show. So they decided to replace Tatanka with the undertaker. And when I got back, they said, Hey, listen, we got a, we got a problem here. Uh, we have to, for the um, uh, video cover, for the VHS mm -hmm. cover, we need you to do a painting of The Undertaker in the exact position of Tatanka, and we're going to Photoshop him in uh, to replace Tatanka. And, right. you know, that's what I did. I actually did a little painting of The Undertaker uh, mm -hmm. solo, and then they scanned it and popped it in with Photoshop, and that's what you see on the uh, video cover. Yeah. Gotcha. The one thing that it's is upsetting when um, my my friends and I, you know, we we do these like reviews on pay per views and things like that. And I, and I collect art prints, and so these old pay per view posters, I I that's what I grew up with. And then as the years went on, and everything became like just strictly Photoshop, like clearly, you know, it, especially yeah. today, the the po the posters just seem so uninspired and and lacking 
creativity and you know they're they're pushing all this stuff out at such great speeds that i feel like there's that some, something's missing you know and the one that i love is like the royal rumble one i really really like um because I, I always just picture yokozuna just in that yep. like bonsai drop position so how is that one how did that come about that was um that was a product of the success of the survivor series paintings uh yeah. and at that and at that point because um i was working uh i was working by the hour in the in the art department i uh my rate was definitely i was a you know 25 years old or so 26 years old and i was definitely able to work for less than uh than joe was so they started actually once they got yeah. the confidence in me they started hiring me to do more of the uh painted stuff and the royal rumble came around they once again for the big events like that they definitely knew what they wanted as far as the visual uh the mm -hmm. concept and then they would let me uh play with it and um come up with the uh the you know the dynamic so that yeah. was uh they told me the exact wrestlers that they wanted in the painting and then it was up to me to kind of arrange them in, uh, you know, in a way that was exciting and fun. And um, they, you know, they did want some, the feeling of the wrestlers like big, larger than life and, you know, literally coming out of the TV into your living room. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why there's the three people down at the bottom, which yeah. is the, uh, the little, uh, the kid, the kid in the bottom is uh, the kid that lived across the street from my brother-in-law uh, <laughs> and one of his friends. My brother-in-law is a bit younger than me, and that was one of his yeah. friends when he was growing up. The middle guy is Mike Foley, who was one of the art directors at the WWF, and the woman is my wife. So I That's put really those, nice. <laughs> I, yeah, I put those in there. And um, they did not, because I created Adam Bomb, and I, I love that costume so much and the character, I, uh, he was not chosen to be in the painting, but mm. if you see, I snuck his goggles in there flying out of the, uh, out of the painting. And that, that was great. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I would do little things to entertain myself in a lot of the paintings, uh, you know, and yeah. sometimes they, most of the time they got through, you know, that's awesome. I wanted to just real quick backtrack a little bit. Cause when I was reading about you, I saw that there was a bit of uh, a mention of Kane. Mm -hmm. um and of course it's not of this era you know and that that's the attitude era but uh what was your involvement with with that character that that's like one thing that i i saw and i'm like oh i gotta ask can't forget that yeah and you know what i have the the cane designs the layouts in my flat files uh that i haven't dug out yet and i will be yeah. showing them and sharing them on social media on the facebook pages and stuff eventually excellent yeah, but the cane, the cane costume came later. I worked there in house from like 91 to 94 or so. Then when they went through all the scandals, uh, they started laying off all the freelancers. I was the last freelancer to to uh, be let go. But I, mm -hmm. I kept working for them freelance at through my home studio. And then um, I did a bunch of paintings for the merchandise catalog of um, a few of the wrestlers and geez, it must've been a good four or five years later of not working for them at all. I reconnected with my, with the creative director and they hired me. They, they asked me if I was interested in doing more costume design and I was interested. I just was out of the scene for, you know, quite some time and yeah. they asked me to do Kane's new costume. So I have, I don't know what to say about the costume design because it was one of those costumes that my vision, it the final product did not come out like my vision. Okay. Um, it was, they, they told me that they, for the mask, they wanted it to look at the time, Todd McFarlane's spawn was really popular and they wanted yeah. the mask to have a spawn like feeling. Hmm. So I did the, uh, I did the, the, uh, mask designs and did a bunch of them and the mask designs looked real cool on paper. 
And, um, and then I did the costume designs and the costume design in my mind, what I was going for was a real kind of Gothic, uh, kind of leather, almost like Edward Scissorhand on steroids, you know, where it was okay. like yeah. leather straps and chains and then the spawn mask. And I thought it would be real. And it they 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 were a bit heavier on the art direction on that one and i couldn't quite fulfill my own vision i wanted him all black uh yeah, with sil yeah, with yeah. silver metal and stuff and they really wanted me to incorporate red into the costume and what i wound up doing was putting red straps on him with this kind of mesh kind of look that was torn up and it looked pretty cool in the drawings and I don't know, to be honest, I don't know how it was received with the fans. Uh, but I'm not quite sure if it was one of the uh, favorite costumes uh, for Kane. And I, and to, th to this day, I, I don't know what the feedback was. I don't know. Just a few years ago, I was like walking through Walgreens and I look and, uh, and I saw the Funko pop, bobble like action figure <laughs> of that costume and yeah. you know for like for like eight bucks or something yeah, and um, i was like oh my god our favorites i was just gonna say if you want man i can give you uh kind of an exclusive here um i probably could find it in about 20 seconds or so yeah um, I mean, be my guest <laughs> okay let me let me Absolutely. see if i can dig that up so here's the uh oh yeah here, there you go. So there's the. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, with the straps and the uh, the mask and um, and then here's a, a second version with different, you know, the different look. You know, I wanted him to be real beat up and, you know, kind of, you know, real got lots of straps. And so what what year uh, what year about is are these designs? from uh man let me think um maybe probably around 2000 okay i would think um yeah. and here check this out it's at the back of adam bomb's singlet i didn't even i didn't even know i did that yeah um yeah i found the original artwork that i did for one of razor ramon's uh logos that uh, th this was this was not the yeah, one that was yeah. chosen, but pretty close. Yeah, yeah, so, right. yeah. You can definitely see hints of the uh, the final. Yeah, here's some ex here's some uh, here's some of the crush logos that were that were not used. But oh, that one's I like that one. That one's cool. Yeah, yeah, there's some cool ones. Some of them are just not practical on a costume. Um, right. Yeah. I you know, but. That but uh yeah so that's geez i didn't even know i had these um yeah razor ramon was 1992 it looks like so anyway um yeah i uh i didn't realize that i had this folder and i don't even know what else is in there but i also see um some cane uh some of the face um designs and yeah taking the time to dig through this and stuff oh here's here's you know a, one of the sketches okay yeah yeah once they like open up the mouth part on his mask you could definitely yeah see. that's cool it yeah has, like hints of like the batman cowl face it, you know sort it, of element. exactly and that yeah, was that cool. that was definitely the ones the ones that i colored were the ones that were actually chosen and okay. um those are buried in the uh flat files a bit i'll have to dig those out but yeah, yeah. absolutely awesome i don't, I don't want to keep you too too much you know i know you got stuff going on but i'd love to definitely connect again at some point i mean there's so much that i would like to discuss and yeah you know as long as you'd <laughs> yeah you know allow us the uh pleasure yeah man um if you know if you want to go for another 15 minutes or so i'm good if you want to just do a part two i'm good with that too yeah i think i think doing a part two i think would be really cool because i want to get okay. to some other stuff as well as like your involvement you know in even just talking about like marvel dc 
um and like magic the gathering i was talking to one of my friends who's like big into magic and world of warcraft and that and he was like no shit <laughs> i was like yeah oh. so like yeah. you know there's there's so much i want to talk about and was image comics one of the ones as well no i i mean i've no? done some i've done some working? stuff that was published in image comics but um for the most part mostly marvel dc dark horse uh and then recently heavy metal comics i did uh I worked with, uh, did some Iron Maiden stuff. That's so cool. That's so yeah, cool. The, the Iron Maiden stuff was like, that was like my fanboy kind of moment of uh, being yeah. able to be yeah. Eddie. That was awesome, yeah. I, I'm so thankful that, that you, uh, you gave gave me this time, you know. Um, you know, we, we just started doing this sort of stuff and, you know, we've been fans for a long time. But sometimes you're not even sure who you're a fan of and then you're, I'm certainly a fan of your work with, with that. Oh, well, and I can't see what else you've, pull out of your files and i'd love to talk more about this stuff yeah i've got i've got you know unlimited i mean there's so many stories that will that are kind of pop up as i'm talking about this stuff i'm remembering other stuff and you know i just discovered a folder of stuff that i didn't even know i had um you know and you know if you you know you know what i would like to add one more thing that's really important um one of the one, you know, I mentioned that I worked with uh, my art director, Adriana, who was fantastic. I can't thank her enough for giving me the opportunity in the beginning to uh, allow me to work there and kind of gave me a, 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 a foundation. But my buddy Jay Jarsdoffer, who I worked with uh, side by side there, and we worked on Papa Shango's props together. And he did, he designed Doink's costume. He designed Shawn Michaels, uh, with the, um, zebra stripes and, yeah. um, did, he, he did a lot of, a lot of costume design and a lot of logo work and was just a super guy, super talented. We hit it off, became lifelong friends. And then a few years ago, he, uh, was diagnosed with leukemia and God. yeah and in between him getting his diagnosis and um uh we had a conversation and we would just i mean just like back in the days when we worked together we would laugh our asses off you know just you know working on this stuff and um yeah. he came up with the idea that um he goes dude he goes how hilarious would it be if there was a if we could possibly uh, get into the Hall of Fame, and um, and how freaking great would it be it for us to go up there in like tuxedos to you know us in suits because <laughs> neither one of us were suit guys, and yeah. he goes and get, you know and this and that and it became this kind of joke between us of, of you know like kind of like like wow that would be awesome but also kind of we would laugh about you know and it kind of stayed at just that and. Um, in 2015, Jay passed away and, um, yeah. So one of the things that started really, um, churning within me while all of this new resurgence of interest and, and kind of learning for the first time, what all this stuff meant to everybody, I'm getting like so many messages of what it meant to their childhoods and um, the characters and the, um, you know, the 90s was such a beloved era and all this stuff. And I just, you know, the thought of like, oh my God, if there is a possibility, I would love to kind of uh, seek out the uh, the possibility of talking to the right people um, and getting the ball rolling to see if that is something that is possible um because i would love nothing more than to be able to do that for jay and his and his uh widow gina um that would be fantastic i mean i'm sure there's something in the way of like online petitions as well like just from the fan perspective because i know like you're saying this stuff meant so much to all of us and you know uh i mean i used to watch the the product with my mom and it, she passed away a few years ago, and that was our connection was was wrestling. And she was, her favorite was Razor Ramon. And uh, oh, that's awesome. So, so like you know, I always had this connection with like Razor Ramon, and you know, I I got to finally meet Scott Hall the other year too, and you know, so like just sort of, I it's deeper than just like watching dudes like you know, 
on TV fighting and stuff like that. It's so much more to, you know, and it's like that with football with people and baseball. And, you know, it's, it's just another one of those things that it means so much to so many people. So to, to be able to honor people, you know, like him, uh, whether it's the hall of fame or what, like, absolutely. And I, I'm sure tons of people would get behind that without a doubt, as long as they knew that it was a thing. Yeah, that's and, and I'm learning that there's now a, um, a uh, an award called the Warrior Award that the Ultimate Warrior. Exactly. That's what I was and thinking as you're talking about this. Yeah, I just learned about that. And uh, my God, if there's, uh, you know, if there's a way to get the ball rolling for that, I mean, it would just be one of the, you know, it would it would literally be one of my life goals to do that for Jay to yeah. um, to see that to fruition would be amazing. So um yeah, if there's any, you know, anybody listening or anything, you know, like, you know, if advice, suggestions, um, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, I'm, I'm, I have open ears and I would love to hear it. Um, yeah, so, definitely. Um, but yeah. Without a doubt. So we're, with we're, you we're saying that, one hundred ten percent, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, with you saying that about Razor Ramon, do you have a copy of my Razor Ramon, uh, paint the painting and the costume design? No, I do not. I just have the Undertaker one. I, I was okay. my first thing. I was like, Undertaker. I'm selfish. I gotta get it <laughs> for myself. And then, and then, just it was that was my initial gut. I was like, I gotta get the Undertaker. And then it wasn't until later that you know, and then we started emailing, and I'm really looking at the stuff that you worked on. And it's like, holy shit, this dude like <laughs> created and was was a part of the things that meant so much to me for for years, you know. And um, you just. It's just funny how things work out, you know what I mean? Thank you so much for uh, joining me and uh, letting us in on bits of information. We look forward to uh, talking more. Yeah, sounds good, man. Just let me know, and I'm, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Right on. Yeah. All right, you have a good one. You take care, man. Okay, thanks. You too, buddy.